Agent Romanov. You miss me? Oh yeah, Charles. We got ourselves an excellent fan. Captain. Guys. Captain. Big fan. Spider-Man. Hey guys and welcome to Film Artsy, your number one source for all things films and movies. And over the course of the existence of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, we've seen a ton of cast members that fans have really grown to love. And one thing that's really interesting is seeing the course that these actors from the Marvel Cinematic Universe have gone on as they've grown as actors and have established their careers either through the MCU or even through other film projects that they've been with. And one thing we really like to do is take a look all the way back to the very beginning of their careers and see where a lot of the time it all either started for them or when they made that life-changing decision to join the Marvel Cinematic Universe and take a shot at getting casted in one of the roles. Now, in general, getting casted into a Marvel film is incredibly challenging, and as we know, a lot of actors try and audition for various roles throughout the MCU over the years, and a lot of the time, even some of the actors that we've seen directly in the MCU didn't even get the role they originally auditioned for, but later on landed a different role. So it's really cool to take a look behind the scenes and see how much a lot of these actors have grown. For instance, to start things off, we wanted to look at the legendary actor Chadwick Boseman, who played the Black Panther and sadly did pass away last year, but just his acting ability and his talent that was portrayed really is a legacy that a lot of fans of the Marvel Cinematic universe will never forget. But when he was jumping in for the very first time, he actually auditioned for the role of Drax from Guardians of the Galaxy. He came in, if you can believe it, an audition for Drax. His audition is incredible because he took a character that was a bit goofy, a bit tortured, and he played him like a king. He absolutely played him with this ferocity and this dignity and this regalness that was not right for Drax. But then what ended up happening is they chose not to cast him as Drax and instead gave Chadwick Boseman the chance to possibly take up the role of Black Panther before Captain America Civil War, which is a bigger role than Drax. And it was just really cool that they had a vision that worked very well with this actor. And it was cool that he was able to create some Something so amazing and legendary and his acting ability didn't end up going unnoticed. That day, every cell in my body united in one single purpose of one day destroying the man who took everything from me. A lot of the times, even later on in the casting stages, when the team has it either finalized to either a couple possible actors or they think they've made their decision but they want to be absolutely sure and run it by other executives, they'll do some sort of screen test. And in this instance, we did see Dave Bautista do a screen test with Chris Pratt for Guardians of the Galaxy prior to filming and production actually beginning, likely for the executives to make that decision if Dave Bautista was the right fit for this role and also see how these two actors would interact with each other. You don't want to kill the girl. If you think about it, Drax, okay? Here's the thing, buddy. All right, you listen to this. You gotta keep that girl around. Why? Because she betrayed Ronan, didn't she? Think about that. She betrayed Ronan. He doesn't like her. He wants her dead. He don't do his work for him. For instance, we can even look earlier on and see Chris Pratt's original audition with Marvel when he was originally trying for the role of Captain America of all things. It's the first time I had ever auditioned Chris Pratt. He didn't audition for Captain America and there was something so interesting and it wasn't quite a fit. So when we were casting Guardians, I very much wanted him to audition for it. And we've even gotten to see some behind the scenes stuff from the casting director, Sarah Finn, who's been involved in picking a lot of the faces and contributing to the casting process as to who ends up getting selected for the film. And getting to hear that Chris Pratt originally auditioned for Captain America is really unique, especially knowing he later landed the role of Peter Quill in Guardians of the Galaxy. Sarah Finn, you know, our casting director, she has such a good eye for what Marvel looks for and what they need in, in their actors to make these movies that remotely sort of lean in on the one thing that we, we said about that particular character. And then she opens these brand new horizons that we weren't even thinking of. She's a great listener. We've also gotten to see a very interesting look of some of the early casting 
videos for Chris Hemsworth and Tom Hiddleston. I'm separated from David, and Simon was nowhere to be found. Oh. Wait, wait. When I discovered an especially rare breed of butterfly. And it's really interesting to see that Tom Hiddleston did in fact audition for the role of Thor first. And not only can we see some of the earliest footage, but we even see them doing some more stuff with him later on, which has kind of gone viral since then. And he jokes about it to this day, but it is really cool to see that Tom Hiddleston, while not landing the role of Thor, did end up playing Loki for pretty much over 10 years. So it's cool to take a look back at that early clip. For someone like Tom Hiddleston, who auditioned for Thor, and ended up playing Loki, who really came off the West End in London lost. and moved into Thor to be the villain. People that bring a sense of joy to their work. We were kind of casting Cap and Thor almost in an overlapping period. Tom Holland was another actor that went through a vigorous audition process as there were a lot of other actors considered for this role. And we remember hearing that at one point it seemed like Marvel was still deciding between 50 actors and slowly those numbers started to go down until there was just a couple people in consideration for the character. And of course, Tom Holland ended up getting it. But we know he had to audition multiple different times, doing various things like screen tests, auditions, and just a lot of involvement before they finally chose him for the role. Action. That's gotta be terrifying as an actor. Like you're walking in with probably your childhood idols. Do, do I need to do that? I know, I know we're on different teams. I just don't want to be disrespectful to you. you surrender. Wait, whoa, that thing does not obey the laws of physics. And um, obviously he got the gig. What are you, what are you, what are you doing here? It's about time we met. Let me get my emails right. About the grant. The September Foundation. Right. Yeah, remember when you applied? Seriously kid, where are you from? Even Robert Downey Jr., who helped kick off the Marvel Cinematic Universe, was actually a high-risk actor for the film, and some of the executives were unsure if he would be a good fit and whether or not he would take the role seriously, and also were concerned with the possibility that he may be a flight risk for the movie. But they still gave it a go, and they gave him, just like all the other actors have had to go through, a screen test to see how he would personify and bring to life the character of Tony Stark. Onto the soundstage the day of the tests he was singing god i hope i get it from a chorus line as we walked in and laughing and in great spirits and completely at ease and he got in front of the camera and started singing the lines Mr. Stark, uh, you have been described by some as a Da Vinci for our time. What do you have to say about that? Uh, da Vinci, uh, ridiculous. I don't paint. Oh, and what do you have to say about the fact that Stark Weapons is responsible for millions of deaths since World War II? Oh boy, let me guess. Uh, Berkeley? Chris Evans was another actor that auditioned for the role of Captain America, though was unsure as to whether or not he even wanted the role. And at one point, he even tried to walk away from the role before deciding that he did in fact want to take up the mantle and become this character. It's really cool to take a look back behind the scenes and see that thought process and what it could involve for him. So everyone was in love with the idea of Chris, except Chris. The only reason there was hesitation to begin with was because of the, the commitment. It's a big movie and you know, those, those are the movies that if, if they succeed, there's a change, a lifestyle change. And if, it's, if, if it fails, it's a whole other can of worms. Even Chris's reluctance to be a star <laughs> spoke to how right he was for the role. And while we've seen Chris Pratt and Chris Evans audition for Captain America, Sebastian Stan was another actor that had auditioned for the role of Captain America and also did not get the role. Though he was still casted for that film and ended up landing the role of Bucky Barnes and he would continue to play this character also for pretty much over 10 years. It's really awesome to get to see how these actors actors have evolved and gotten the chance even when they faced sometimes a big denial in front of them and they didn't get the role their first time around. And even the ones that did get their role still had a long process before it seemed like they were the final decision. In the process of casting for Captain America, there were a lot of actors that came in and auditioned and had you know varying degrees of success along the way. Sebastian Stan had auditioned for Captain America but we felt there was a bit of darkness there. He ended up being Bucky. 
And lastly, we wanted to look at Karen Gillan, who of course was the actress in Guardians of the Galaxy and later films to play Nebula, but originally she auditioned for Sharon Carter. And while she didn't get that role, they chose her as maybe one of the possible actresses to jump on for the role of Nebula and had her read for Nebula to see if she was a good fit. So she came in and auditioned. James described Nebula as being somewhat childlike. The disdain that brings in you for our way of life, but I am at my brain. And Karen having kind of this cherubic beauty mixed with the darkness that she was able to convey. Let us know your thoughts in the comments down below. Be sure to subscribe with notifications on for more videos like this uploaded every day of the week. That's it for today, though. We'll see you all next time with a brand new video.